Okay, so what I want to do um, in this video is go over the solutions for the practice four um, handout. So practice four and these are the solutions. Okay, so the first question, um, they give you a pair of linear equations, right? So a system of linear equations. So 3x plus y is equal to 13, and 2x plus 3y is equal to 4. And they want to know whether the point, the ordered pair 5, 2, is a solution to that set of equations. So how do we check to see whether that's a solution? We simply plug it in, but it has to satisfy both equations. right? If it doesn't satisfy one of the equations or neither of the equations, it cannot be a solution. It has to satisfy both equations. So if I plug this in, Um, to the first equation, so I have x, I remember this is always x, y. So if x is 5, where I have an x, I'll put in a 5, and where I have a y, I'll put a 2. Put a question mark there. And actually, in this case, I have, this is 15 plus 2, right, which is 17, and that does not equal 13. So therefore, it doesn't even satisfy the first equation, it definitely cannot satisfy the system. So in this case, the answer would be no that point is not a solution to that system of equations. So B would be the correct answer. All right? It has to satisfy both of them. It doesn't even satisfy the first one, so it definitely cannot be a solution to that system. Okay, number two. Was um, match the system with the appropriate graph and it said a system with a solution 1, 8. So what does it mean to be a solution? It's where the two lines would cross, right? A solution is exactly where the two lines would cross. And if you look at those um, four possibilities, then the correct answer is going to be uh, graph B, right? So those lines cross at 1, 8. They intersect at 1, 8. Okay, number three. Solve by graphing. Okay. So in this case, we have x minus y is equal to two and then x plus y is equal to eight and i want to solve by graphing let me i'll draw the graph a little over to the right over here Okay, so remember, how do we solve by graphing? Well, we have to graph both those lines, right? So I'll make a little table, and I'll graph that first line. So let me pick some easy points to plug in. I don't know, maybe if x is zero, then I have zero minus y is equal to two. So that's negative uh, one y equals two. If I divide by negative one, I'm gonna get y is equal to negative two. And then if I, let's do the other intercept, so that was the y intercept, we'll do the x-intercept. If I make y zero, um, then I have x minus zero is equal to two, and that's simply x equals two. Okay, so zero, negative two, and two zero are gonna be on that first line. So zero, negative two, and 
and two, zero. So it looks like this first line will look like this. Okay, and then for the second line, again, I'll make a little table. Let's see, if x is zero, it looks like y is gonna be eight, right? Because I have zero plus y equals eight. So this is eight. And then let's do the other intercept. If I do y is zero, then I have x plus zero is equal to eight. So x is eight. So zero, eight. I gotta go a little higher here, right? This is like maybe right here. Do that in red right there. And then eight, zero. It's going to be right here. So then if I graph this, oh, let me, let me actually do it in blue. So if I graph this, it's going to look like this. So where they cross, right, so right there must be the solution. And it looks like, again, this is why graphing is not necessarily the best method to use because it's sometimes difficult to figure out. But it looks like, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, and an up three. It looks like that's the point five comma three. This is not super accurate with graphing, but that should be it. So let's see. Um, yeah, that's under. So that's, it should be A. So the answer is A in this case. So where those two lines cross, that's the solution, right? It satisfies both equations. It lies on both lines. Okay, number four. Um, solve by substitution and check. Okay, so I have 2x plus y is equal to negative 10. And then y is equal to 2x minus 2. Okay, so remember, the first step for substitution is to solve for one of the variables in one of, um, in one of the equations. Well, we've done that, right? It's already done for us. In the second equation, it's solve for y. So immediately, I can go to the substitution step. I can take that expression, right, 2x minus 2, and I can plug it in for y into the first equation. So where I have a y in the first equation, I'm going to plug in 2x minus 2. Okay, so now I have an equation just in terms of x. I can solve this. So first... Um, you want to make sure you combine like terms. So 2x plus 2x is 4x. I need to add 2. So I have 4x is equal to negative 8. And then finally divide by 4. So it looks like x is going to be equal to negative 2. And then... I'm, I need to find y, so how do I find y? Well, I can plug that back into one of the original equations, and the easiest one to plug into is going to be the second one, right? Because it's already written in terms of y. So if I plugged it in, y equals 2x minus 2, and I know that x is negative 2. Well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and then negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So it looks like y is equal to negative 6. So therefore, um, the ordered pair, the solution, is going to be negative 2 comma negative 6. Right? It's always x comma y. So I guess b would be the correct answer. Okay, so that would be the solution. Okay, um, five, same thing, solved by substitution. So in this case, we're given 2x plus 10y 
is equal to 2, and then x equals negative 5y minus 1. So the first step is already done for us again. The second equation is solved um, for x, right? So the x is isolated. So immediately I can go to the substitution part. I can go to the first equation where I have an x. I can plug in this expression, negative 5y minus 1. So just be careful here, right? Remember, it's two times, so you need parentheses, and then you can put negative 5y minus 1, because that's the same as x, plus 10y, and then equals 2. If I distribute the 2 here, I'm going to get negative 10y minus 2 plus 10y is equal to 2. And then if I try to um, combine like terms, right, the y's are going to be gone. So negative 10y plus 10y is gone. That's 0. So I'll get something that's never true, right? I get negative 2 equals 2. Or if you want, you can even add 2 to both sides. And you could say 0 is equal to 4. Either way, this is never true. This is always false. So remember, this is one of our special cases. If you try to solve the system of equations and you get something at the end there that's always false, what is the correct answer for the solution? Well, it means that there's no solution, right? It means that those two lines were actually parallel lines. So they never cross, so there's no solution. So I guess C would be the correct answer in this case. So C. Okay, um, six. Let's see, there were 580 people at a school play. The admission price was $2 for adults and $1 for children. The admission receipts were $820. How many adults and how many children attended? So first step, give variable names to your unknowns, which is the number of adults and number of children, right? So if we let, say, A equal the number of adults, and maybe C is equal to the number of children, Then I want to come up with two linear equations involving A and C, and then I can solve that system for A and C. So the, the first equation is going to involve the total number of people at the play, right? There's 580 people. So what does that mean? It means the number of adults, A, plus the number of children, C, that's got to equal 580. That's our first equation that involves A and C. Okay, the second equation is going to involve the total amount of money that was collected, right? So if there were A adults and each adult paid $2 for admission, then the amount of money collected just by the adults must have been $2 per adult times A, right? Times the number of adults. So 2A is the amount of money collected from the adults. And, it, and then children paid $1, so the amount of money collected uh, from the children is $1 times C. Right, which is just C in this case. And that's got to equal the total amount of money that was collected, which is $820. So that is our system of linear equations that we need to solve now. Right? Remember, the hard part is setting up that system. So now that it's set up, now we can solve it. Okay, in most cases, um, elimination is probably going to be the easier method to use. To solve these equations so like in this case see how first of all the the a's see how these are lined up right the a's and then the c's and then the constants are all lined up like they should be so that's good so that part is done and if you look at the c here um you have a one you have a one c and a one c if we can make one of those a negative one c then the coefficients will be opposite and we can add them and get rid of the c's so what I would do is maybe multiply that first equation. You could do either one, but I would say the first equation by negative 1 because I want to change 
that to a negative c. But I can't just change the c, right? I get to change the entire equation. So both sides need to be multiplied by negative 1. So when we do that, I have to distribute this negative 1. I'm going to get negative a minus c equals negative 580. In the second equation, I can leave the same. So I'll just write it down again. 2a plus c is equal to 820. Okay, now add the equations. Well, when I add the equations, negative a plus 2a is just 1a, so that's a. The c's are gone because negative c plus c is 0 by design, right? That's what we want it to be. And then if I do um, 820 minus 580, what is that, 240, I guess? So it looks like the number of adults is going to be 240 adults. And then I need to figure out the number of children, but I can do that by plugging back into one of my original equations. So probably the easiest equation to use is the a plus c is equal to, what was it, 580? 580. Right, I know a now is 240. So to solve for C, I'll subtract 240 from both sides. And I'm going to get C is equal to, um, what is that, 340. So that's it. So the number of adults was 240, because remember A represented the number of adults, and the number of children was 340. So it looks like D is the correct answer in this case. Okay, seven. So seven's another applied problem. Um, it says, Jason made an extra $5,000 last year from a part-time job. He invested part of the money at an annual interest rate of 10% and the rest at 9%. If the total annual earnings were $460, how much money was invested at 9%? Okay, so again, what are our unknowns? Well, some of the money was invested at 10%, some of it was invested at 9%. We don't know how much, let's just give variable names. Actually, in this case, let's just call it X and Y. So I'll say X was the amount um, invested at 10%, and Y was the amount invested at 9%. 9%. Okay, so let's see if we can come up with two linear equations involving x and y given the information from the question. So Jason made an extra $5,000 last year. Part of the money was invested at 10%, part of it was invested at 9%. So that means the total amount invested at 10% x plus the total amount invested at 9% y, that must be equal to the $5,000, right, that he got extra? Because he split it up, invested part of it at 10%, part of it at 9%. So x plus y must equal 5,000. And then um, the total earnings, right, from the investments was $460. So how do we figure that out? Well, if x is the amount invested at 10%, then if I do 10% of x, so that would be 0 0.10 times x. That must be how much interest was made from that investment, right? Plus 9% of y, and the way I can write that is 0 0.09y. That's got to equal, uh, what was it, $460. Okay, so 0 0.10x plus 0 0.09y, that must equal 460. Great, so we have our system of equations, so now we can solve them. Now, um, what I would do to make things a little easier, instead of dealing with those decimals, right, I can multiply that second equation by 100, and it will get rid of those decimals, so I don't have to worry about them. But remember, you got to multiply both sides by 100, because I'm not changing the equation, I'm just rewriting it. You don't have to do this, but this makes it cleaner because then we're dealing with just integers. You don't have to worry about decimal numbers, right? So 100 times 0.10x is just 10x. 
Here it just moves the decimal two places to the right. 100 times 0 0.09y is just 9y. And then 100 times 460 is 46000, right? 46,000. And the first equation will stay the same. Okay, now what do we want to eliminate? Well, let's say, um, it's again, it's sort of set up for elimination. Let's say we want to eliminate the x's, okay, and the x's here. Well, right now I have a 10x and a 1x. If I can make that second equation, if I can make that coefficient a negative 10, right, a negative 10x, then I can add them and get rid of the x's. Okay, so let's do that. Well, how do I do that? I need to mu first multiply that second equation by negative 10, right, both sides. So this is going to be negative 10x minus 10y is equal to negative, I guess, 50,000. Okay, so let me finish the problem over here to the right. So right now I have this. I have 10x plus 9y is equal to... 46,000 and then negative 10x minus 10y is negative 50,000. Okay, so I'm going to add the two equations together, right? The x's are gone by design. 9y minus 10y is negative y. And then 46,000 minus 50,000 is negative, what is that, negative 4,000. And if I divide by negative 1, then I'm going to get y is equal to 4,000. So it looks like um, $4,000 was invested at 9%. And that's actually... Because remember we said y was the amount invested at 9% and x was the amount invested at 10%. So it looks like $4,000 was invested at 9%. So that's our answer. But let's find the x just in case we need the x as well. So to find the x, I just plug back into one of those equations. Probably the easiest equation to plug back into would be this first one. right? So if I do x plus x plus y is equal to 5,000, but now I know that y is 4,000. So if I subtract 4,000, I'm going to get x is equal to 1,000. Right? And these are really dollars. Okay, so remember x was the amount invested at 10%, so $1,000 was invested at 10%. Y was the amount invested at 9%, so $4,000 was invested at 9%. And the question number seven asked us how much was invested at 9%. So the answer is going to be um, that, right? $4,000. So it should be D. All right, number eight. So solve by elimination and then check. So x plus y is equal to 6. x minus y is equal to negative 10. Well, this is nice, right? Because if you look at that, first of all, it's set up for elimination. And it looks like we can immediately eliminate the y's, right? Because we have a plus 1 and a minus 1 as our coefficients. So if I add these two equations together, the y's are gone. I'm going to get 2x is equal to, well, 6 plus negative 10 is negative 4. Divide by 2, divide by 2. So x is equal to negative 2. And then if I want to find the y, I'll plug that back into one of these, maybe the first equation. So x plus y is equal to 6. So if I plug uh, negative 2 in for x, I need to add 2, right, to isolate the y. And I'm going to get y is equal to 8. So the solution in this case would be negative 2, 
comma eight. So it looks like um, B is the correct answer. Okay, nine is another one solved by elimination. So here's our system, 3x plus y is equal to 3, and then 2x minus 2y is equal to negative 4. Okay, so we have a choice, right? We could either eliminate the x or the y, but it's going to be a little easier just to eliminate the y. Right? If I want to eliminate the x, right now, see how I have a 3 and a 2? Well, because I want these coefficients to be opposites, I'd have to find, first of all, the lowest common multiple of 3 and 2, which is 6. And I'd have to make one of them a positive 6 and one of them a negative 6. So that means multiplying one of the equations by 2 and the other one by negative 3. Right? Or vice versa, you could do negative 2 and positive 3. Right? You just have to make them opposites. But... If instead I want to eliminate the y's, then right now I have a 1y and a negative 2y. So if I make this a 2, if I make the first equation a 2y, then I can just add and get rid of the y's. So if I eliminate the y's, I only need to change one of my equations instead of both equations. So you should always do what's, what, you know, the least amount of work that you have to do to solve it. Right? We could eliminate either one, but it's going to be easier to eliminate the y's. So the first step is I'm going to have to multiply that first equation by 2 because I want to make sure I get a 2y there. And don't forget to do the other side. Okay, so this is going to be um, 6x plus 2y is equal to 6. And then the second equation is 2x minus 2y is equal to negative 4. Now I can add them, right? The y's are gone by design. I'm going to get 8x is equal to, what's that, 2? And then if I divide by 8, I get x is equal to 2 eighths, but then we can simplify that. That's the same as 1 fourth, right? So it looks like x is equal to 1 fourth. Now, how do I find um, the y? Well, I have to plug back in. So let me plug back in. Um, doesn't matter which one. Maybe the first equation is a little easier because right, I just have y by itself. So I have 3x plus y is equal to 3. So I'm kind of going back up here to finish the work. So, And I know that x is um, 1 fourth. So I have 3 times 1 fourth plus y is equal to 3. So this is 3 fourths plus y is equal to 3. And then how do I solve for y? Well, there's a bunch of different things you could do. You could eliminate um, the fractions by multiplying everything by 4. Or we could just subtract 3 fourths. Let, I, I usually eliminate the fractions, but let's do it the other way just to show you how to do it. So I can just subtract 3 fourths on both sides. Okay, so I have y equals 3 minus 3 fourths. But in order to subtract fractions, I need to have the same denominator. You can think of 3 as 3 over 1. So I need to multiply this by 4 over 4, right? Because I want the lowest common denominator of 4. So now this becomes 12 fourths minus 3 fourths. And that's equal to 9 fourths. So it looks like y is equal to 9 fourths. So the solution is going to be x, which is 1 fourth, comma, y, which is 9 fourths. So that would be the solution. Um, so let's see, I think it's, yeah, it looks like it's a. So this should be a. Okay, 10. So in this one, let's see, we have 3x plus 6y is equal to 5, and then negative 15x minus 30y 
is equal to negative 25. All right, so again, it's set up for elimination. Actually, they want us to use elimination anyways. And it looks like, well, we have our choice, right? We could either eliminate the x's and y's. Let's just choose the x in this case. So right now I have, I have a negative 15x, I have a positive uh, 3x. If I could make that first coefficient to be a positive 15, then I could get rid of the x's, right? Well, how do I get a positive 15 if I have a 3 right now? I need to multiply that whole first equation by 5, both sides. I need to change it so that it gives me a 15x there. Again, don't forget to do both sides. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to get 15x plus 30y is equal to 25. Second equation, I'll just write down again. Now, when you go to add them, so now we can add them, and look what happens. The x's are gone, the y's are gone, so I have 0. And 25 minus 25 is also 0. Well, 0 equals 0. This is always true. So remember, what does that mean in terms of solutions? It means that those two lines are actually the same line, and every point on that line, or either of those lines, because they're the same, represents a solution. So there's an infinite number of solutions. Right? Remember the three cases. If you get 0 equals 0, right? it's always true, infinite number of solutions. So that'll be um, A in this case. If you got like 0 equals 5, that would be no solution, right? Those would be parallel lines. And then typically, you get x equals something, y equals something. You get an actual ordered pair, right? So the, the, this is another one of those special cases, infinite number of solutions. Okay, then let's say there's two more questions, and they're both applications of systems of equations. So this one, 11... Um, you're told a quarterback throws a pass that travels 38 yards with the wind in 2.5 seconds. If he had thrown the same pass against the wind, the football will, would have traveled 16 yards in 1.5 seconds. Find the speed of the pass that the quarterback would throw if there were no wind. Okay, so we have to think about this, right? Um, I need to give some names to the variables. So let, let's call like S the speed of the ball with no wind, because that's what we're trying to find, right? With no wind. This is, this is very similar to the question where you're rowing with a current and against a current. Same exact idea. So we're also going to need the speed of the wind. So I'll say maybe W is the speed of the wind. Okay, so um, remember there's one piece of information we need from physics. We need the fact that distance is equal to speed times time. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out our two equations that we need. So the first sentence says, a quarterback throws a pass that travels 38 yards. Okay, so that's our distance, 38 yards. And it's thrown, let's see, with the wind. So it's thrown with the wind. So the speed that the ball has relative to someone watching this is going to be the speed that he can throw with no wind plus you have to add the additional speed of the wind, right? Those speeds add together. So it looks like it's traveling faster because it's going with the wind itself. So the speed of the ball is actually going to be S plus W. And then how long did it take um, to travel 38 yards? It looks like 2.5 seconds. So this is going to be times 2.5, right? 2.5 seconds. And then against the wind... It traveled 16 yards. What was the speed? Well, if he's throwing against the wind, then it's the speed that he could throw with no wind 
minus the speed of the wind. You have to subtract it like it's fighting against the ball. So it's actually going slower. So you have to subtract it. And that took 1.5 seconds. So the time was 1.5. Okay, so those are our two equations. So the first thing I would do is um, distribute the 2.5 and the 1.5. And actually, I would write it on, on this side. So we have 2.5, I'll just write it over again, times S plus W equals 38, and then 1.5 times S minus W equals 16. So now let, let's distribute the 2.5 and the 1.5. So the first equation is going to give 2.5 S plus 2.5 W that is equal to 38. And then the second one gives 1.5s minus 1.5w. That's equal to 16. Okay, what you might want to do now is you might want to clear out those, um, those decimals. So since there's one decimal point, we could clear them out by multiplying both sides of the equation by 10. Right, that'll move it one, um, the decimal point one place to the right. So I'm just going to do that just so I don't have to worry about decimal numbers. And don't forget the right-hand side. And then same thing with the second equation. So 10 times 1.5s minus 1.5w equals 10 times 16. So if I do that, right, I'm going to get 25s. So I'll, I'll finish it over here. Um, 25s plus 25w is equal to, I guess, 380. And then the second equation is going to be, if I distribute this 10, I'm going to get 15s minus 15w. equals 10 times 16 is 160. Okay, so those are the two equations I have to solve. Now, let's see, maybe, maybe the easiest to eliminate is the W, but right now we have a 25, right, for that coefficient, and a minus 15 for this coefficient. We want them to be opposites. So what's What's the lowest common the lowest common multiple of 25 and 15? Well, you could work it out, right? You could do the factor tree. I could do it quick here. Remember this is just 5 times 5. 15 is 3 times 5. And you have to take each factor the greatest number of times it occurs in either of the factorizations. So 3 occurs 0 times in the first factors, factorization, once in the second one. So I take the 3 once. And the 5 occurs twice in the first factorization and once in the second. So I take it twice. And that's just going to be 75. Okay, And that's something you could have guessed, right? The smallest number that 25 and 15 will go into evenly is 75. So that's the lowest common uh, multiple. So we'd like to make the first coefficient say a positive 75 and we'd like to make the second coefficient of the w a negative 75. So how do I do that? Well I can make the first one a positive 75 if I multiply that first equation by 3, right? So let me, let's do that. Let's multiply this first equation by 3. Don't forget to do this side. So I'm going to get 75s plus 75w is equal to, let's see, 3 times 380. That's 1140. And then for the second equation, to get a negative 75 there, I need to multiply it by 5. Uh, 
and both sides too. So I can't forget this right hand side, right? Okay, so I have five times 15, that looks like it's 75 S again, minus 75 W is equal to, and what is that? I think that's 800. So 800. Okay, so now, actually let me make a new, a new page and, and write that down. So I have 75S plus 75W is equal to 1140, and 75S minus 75W is equal to 800, All right? So I'll, I'll finish this problem at the top of another page. So we ended up with 75S plus 75W is equal to 1140, and then 75S minus 75W is equal to 800. All right, so if I add these together, the Ws are gone. 75 plus 75 is what, 150? So 150S, and that's equal to, what's that, 1940, I guess? So I can solve for S by dividing by 150. So S equals, and if you do this out, let's see, 1940 divided by 150, looks like you get 12.9. And since the distance was in yards and this time was in seconds, the speed is yards per second, okay? And then if we really wanted to figure out um, the speed of the wind, we could plug this back in, right, to one of the equations and solve for W. But in this case, they just wanted to know the speed of the pass that the quarterback would throw if there were no wind. And that was what we called S. So we have our answer. It should be 12.9 yards per second. Um, so let's see. It looks like it's D. Yep. So D is our correct answer. That one's, that one's difficult. I agree that... Um, you know, some of these are more difficult than others. Probably for the exams and quizzes on my open math, I'm going to stick with ones that deal with, you know, like attendance at a concert or like the next question where we talk about um, having um, certain types of bills or certain types of coins. I'm going to stick with the easier ones probably for, for your exam. So don't worry too much about this. Um, the ones where you have to use the physics with the um, throwing with the wind and against the wind or with rowing with the current and against the current are a little more difficult. But hopefully that made sense. All right, so let's do the last one, 12. Okay, so it said a waiter made a deposit of $243. His deposit consisted of 83 bills, some of them $1 bills and the rest $5 bills. How many $1 bills did he deposit? So create var variable names. Again, in this case, we could probably just, just use X and Y. Let's say X is the number of $1 bills. And we'll say Y is the number of $5 bills. Okay, so Let's see if we can come up with two linear equations involving X and Y um, from the information that we're given from the sentences. Well, the first, it, actually the first sentence says that his deposit, actually the second sentence we should use first. If his deposit consisted of 83 bills. So we know that the number of $1 bills, X, plus the number of $5 bills, Y, that must equal 83. Right? It has to be the total number of bills. So that's one equation for sure. And then the other piece of information we know is that the total deposit was $243. So if X is the number of $1 bills, then the total amount of money that was deposited from $1 bills must be 1 times X, right? which is still just X in this case. 
And then the total amount of money deposited from the $5 bills, well, if I have Y $5 bills and each one is worth $5, then this is going to be 5 times Y. Does that make sense? And that's got to equal the total amount of money that was deposited, which is 243. Okay, so there is our system. All right, there's our system of two linear equations in two variables, in x and y. So now we need to solve it. Again, let's just use elimination. Um, in this case, it looks like this is pretty nice, right? If I can make one of the x's a negative one, then I could just add them and get rid of the x's. So let me make the first, let's make the first equation a negative one. So I need to multiply the entire first equation by negative one, both sides. So if I distribute that, I'm going to get negative x minus y is equal to negative 83. And in the second equation, I have x plus 5y is equal to 243. Okay, so let's see. Let's add them now. So the x's are gone, right, by design. Negative y plus 5y is 4y. And then let's see. Two like negative eighty three plus two forty three is one sixty, and if I divide by four, I'm gonna get y is equal to forty. But y represented what we called y the number of five dollar bills, right? So there were forty. $5 bills, but they want to know the number of $1 bills. So you have to be careful, right? Make sure you're answering the correct question. They want to know the number of $1 bills he deposited. And that was what we called X. So now I need to find X. Well, I can do that just by plugging Y equals 40 back into one of these equations. And probably this one is the easiest, right? To plug back in. So I know that X plus Y equals 83. I'll finish it over here, x plus y equals 83. And I just found that y is 40. So if I subtract 40 from both sides, then I'm going to get x is equal to 43. And again, what does that mean? It means that there were 43 $1 bills that were deposited. So it looks like um, C is the correct answer in this case. All right, great. Hopefully uh, that was helpful. And I will soon start posting uh, video lectures for Chapter 5. And again, I think you guys will find that Chapter 5 is going to be a little bit of a break. Look, chapters 3 and 4 are definitely the two hardest chapters in, in Algebra 1. All right.